Welcome. It is Wednesday and I am Penny Nelson. Welcome to my living room. Welcome to my life. Welcome to another learn to pray with Mumsy or manner with Mumsy or just learn how to pray. Let's learn how to talk to Jesus, read the Bible, and let's do it together. I am a a little reflective because this week is vacation Bible school so I am actually home tonight because I might let's see it's possible potential that I could have been exposed to COVID on Saturday but I've already had my immunization and I don't think it actually counted as a let's see exposure is what it's called um, so I went today to have a, a COVID test and my rapid COVID test came back negative but I was instructed to wait until I get back my other COVID tests because they took two of them and it really wasn't that bad it was slightly uncomfortable but it was it was not that bad it was just a cotton swab in your nose like four times so I'm supposed to quarantine just in case um because that's the safe thing to do okay so Today's Wednesday and Monday and Tuesday it was vacation Bible school. So I have been teaching the kids about missions and what is missions? The mission is the Great Commission. Why would we do missions? Because there is a God. His name is Jesus. He is Savior. He is the boss. We already went over. He is, let's see. Forgot the first one. The second one, he is mighty. Today is he is holy, holy, holy. Uh, hard to apply, but anyways, I usually I was very fortunate because my four of my grandchildren came last night, so I want to get back to the basics. So the point of the basics are prayer is communication with the living God. Jesus is alive. He died on the cross, but he rose from the grave because he is the boss of death. He is the ruler of death. He is in charge of death, and so that means he's still alive. And so we can talk to him and listen to him, and that's what prayer is, is communication. And so you and I, you the viewer, the listener, and I are going to have a time of prayer and devotion or just... It's like a like a spiritual cooking show like learn how to learn how to cut and put on a spoon and chew the the food the the spiritual food and why do we need spiritual food well that is because my friend you are a spirit an eternal spirit in a body you are are a spirit you but you live in a body you are not a body your spirit is eternal and will last forever and your earth suit will die <laughs> that's why we have to think about eternity and what comes next so that's something that no one ever told me so you could you could think on that okay so let's see am i at the beginning yet we're going to start with prayer i'm going to pray You're probably going to need like 20 minutes. You probably want some privacy. You probably maybe you want to put on your headphones or be like alone driving in your car so you and I can just learn how to pray together. This is like a, a do it yourself, learn how to pray step by step video. So, the first thing you do is that you can just talk to Jesus. You can talk to him. Now, the reason why you can talk to him is because he did it. So who are we talking to? Well, we are talking to, I like, I like Almighty. We are talking to God Almighty. And why can we talk to him? Because he did it. He invited us to talk to him. So we can, we can trust that. So we can just start where we are, which is right here, right now, today, in this moment. 
And I am talking to Jesus, the one true God, that, the one that I know, the one that I serve, and the one that I pray that you will see in my life. So let's just get to it. Oh, it's a different type of time of day. It's not 8 in the morning. It's 8 at night. And the kids, in fact, are still at vacation Bible school. After a busy two hours, they're about to go back down and sing Mystery Island, ooh, ah, Mystery Island, ooh. <sighs> and we, we're not on an island. <laughs> I was on Mission Island yesterday. I heard a great saying. I thought to myself, I'm not on Misery Island. I'm not on Misery Island. I'm on Mystery Island or Mission Island. And change is possible. Hope is available. Okay, so Lord, I pray you would shift my mind so I'm not concerned about the viewer or the cicadas singing outside or the view that I told them of this screen that's not going to be anything to look at anyways, Lord, I pray that you would just help me to pray, help me to demonstrate just talking to you. So let me just let go of everything else that's in my mind and in my heart and just lay it down. And when I do that, Lord, and in my mind I get in a a reverent or posture, which is mainly just fall on your face and kneel in reverence and respect, knowing that you are God and I am not. I just bow to you. I just take a minute to remember that you're God. You are God alone. And you don't owe me anything. You don't owe me any explanations. You don't owe me any... I don't have any privilege. And quite the contrary. I very much deserve bad treatment, but you you don't treat me as my sins deserve. You offer and extend grace and mercy. And I was thinking about it today. There's a song, I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. And I was thinking about changing the word love to word. I will build my life upon your word. But I don't know how or why I would even want to if I didn't understand or comprehend or had experienced your love. And we are fickle human beings. We do lean on experience. Now feelings will fail. Because my feelings can be changed by bad hamburger. My feelings can be changed, but I... You are so kind. You bend down low and you've revealed yourself to me. And I... And it's all supported by the, the rectangle box of the Bible. <laughs> and the rectangle box of the Bible is very important. It is, it is the map. It is the map and it is, it is the way to go. And it teaches me about you. It teaches me about you. It doesn't just teach me about information. It teaches me about you. So I was praying for my friend. I was praying for him. help. God, I need help today. God, would you please help? Would you please help? Thank you. All right, so now we are going to do what I call manna. We're going to do it together. And the later in the day, the harder it is for me. So manna is um, what the children of Israel, that's what they were slaves. They were captives in Egypt. And God, by Moses, led them through the Red Sea. The enemy was drowned behind them. But these former slaves sure did have a hard time remembering or applying all of these miracles and signs and wonders that they saw. <laughs> and remembering his word, I guess, remembering what he said. Anyways, these people were in the desert and they needed provision because they had brought nothing except a bunch of jewels, which they couldn't use in the desert because all the 
Egyptians gave them their stuff, strangely enough. Provisioned to buy nothing because there's no 7-Elevens, okay? Anyways, God provided manna, living, well, he provided bread. And every day they had to go collect it. And every day they were to eat it, but they couldn't have, have more, too much. Like you couldn't build over for tomorrow. And so that is the idea. When Jesus said that he is the living bread, every day you need to eat living bread. And so I call, when, when I'm reading along in my Bible, and I find something that stands out to me, I butter my popcorn words. And then I put it on a note card. And this is what I shared with the kids yesterday. Jesus said, go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord